What's going on, everybody? This is Jeff with Living in Arizona, and today we're going to talk about saving money when in Arizona or moving to Arizona. So uh, in our group, Living in Arizona, which most of you guys are a part of, I mean, we're growing like 40 new members every day on that group. So I know a lot of you guys are already in there asking the questions, but if you guys aren't already in there, you can join. But some of these questions keep coming up. How do I get huge savings on summer months with electricity? Um, how do I save money with the registration? Because people are hearing that registration is really expensive. So I've done a little bit of research here to kind of help you guys with ideas of how to save money with that. And you know, the, sol the people think that getting solar is like the instant solution, but that usually ends up saving you money if you plan to stay there for longer than five years. And um, <laughs> you know, it's, it's kind of like, if you don't plan to stay there for five years, you basically installed those solar panels on that house uh, for someone else. So if you guys are excited about this video, crush up the likes and let's dive in here and talk about it. So the first thing I'm going to talk about is where some of the most affordable housing is in Arizona or some of the most affordable cities. Believe it or not, Bullhead City is a really affordable place to live. It's just hot and there's not much there. And if you like anything green like trees, there's not too many of those in Bullhead City. There's more trees in Phoenix and Tucson than there is in Bullhead City. Uh, another, another place, if you want a big city in Tucson, say, you can get really affordable housing in the Tucson metro area. Tucson's more affordable in terms of housing than Phoenix, okay? So uh, central Phoenix or Phoenix in general, if you live in the city of Phoenix is affordable, but once you get out into the suburbs, the, the, not not the, the far suburbs like Santan Valley or Queen Creek, but when you get to the external suburbs like say Scottsdale or Peoria or even um, Gilbert, Chandler, it's going to get a little bit more expensive. So, but the inner city of Phoenix is still pretty affordable outside of Paradise Valley. So, I mean, that's that's pretty good. Uh, a place like Flagstaff is expensive. So, Sedona, Flagstaff, more expensive than even Phoenix. Uh, if you're going to Scottsdale, get ready to pay the money because Scottsdale is going to be a premium city. But if you're talking about moving to, you know, Tucson, Tucson, if you look at the prices, you can get some really good homes in the Tucson area. So. Thanks to the uh, eight people who already crushed up the likes. Yeah, by the way, guys, I am in Queenstown in uh, New Zealand right now. So if the uh, the internet's not too good, that would be because I'm in a hotel <laughs> in Queenstown. For those of you who follow my other channel, Island Hopper TV, you've seen all my videos from Australia. I actually haven't gone live since, what, Singapore. So I don't think I talked to any, I don't think I made any videos while I was in Australia, but I made uh, six no, seven videos about Australia, Adelaide, Perth, Sydney, Melbourne, Hobart, Tasmania, Brisbane, and Gold Coast. Now I'm, I've done Auckland and I've done uh, Queenstown. So for those of you who want to gain some perspective on that, we can talk about that a little later on in the video. But let me crack back in. Um, Nightmare AMV says, I'm moving to Arizona sometime this year. Any tips for someone that is literally starting out in life? Well, I mean, you probably want to be where there's other young people uh, because, you know, you're looking for a social crowd, but also you want to be around people who can mentor you. I think that's important because you don't want to just get around young people who are just bouncing off the walls, doing all sorts of things. Because in Phoenix, a lot of one of the, one of the things that I don't think a lot of you guys fully realize, Phoenix is a city that knows how to party. And I don't just say that because I'm like, oh, yeah, well, Phoenix, we know how to party. Phoenix is a party city that it's it's really uh it doesn't matter how old you are, you're going to want to party in Phoenix. You're going to want to go out. It's kind of fun. It's, it's a fun thing to do and it kind of becomes addicting. But, you know, you, you don't want to get so addicted to partying that you forget that um, you need to be responsible and build a, a future for yourself. So as a young person just starting out, you're going to want to, you know, have fun and go out. But you're going to do that a couple times a month. You're not going to want to do that every single day because your main focus in life is your mission in life is your career and what you're doing to build your future for yourself and when you have a family or whatever you plan to do, right? So um, places like that, you know, Tempe is probably a good starting place. Ahwatukee is a good starting place, uh, you know, because there's young people, but it's also in the, like Tempe is starting to become a, a good place for people who are career oriented, but it's also close enough to, um, to the uh, Scottsdale. Noel says, have you ever heard of Becklon in Tucson? They have a research position in Tucson I'm looking at. I have not heard of it. Top development areas 
the 55 plus communities, Buckeye. Okay, Dan, Luis, I'll answer that question here in a moment. And let me talk about how to save money with um, some tips for saving money on your uh, electric, because I know a lot of you guys are concerned about moving to Arizona and, and, and staying you know, in a livable environment in your house uh, during the summer. So insulation is, is kind of the key here. Insulation is step one, right? You want to have insulation in the attic. Another thing to keep in mind is if you get a two-story house, that means your air conditioner has to work extra to get that air up into those extra rooms. So yes, you might buy into this idea that a big old two-story house is readily available, but little do you know, it's going to take a lot of air conditioning power to get your house cool to stay cool, right? Now, some of those things, if you do have to get a two-story house, you're going to want to get sunshades sunshades to just keep some of that in. And you're also going to want to make sure that you have that attic insulation, that proper insulation in between the drywall and the stucco because your house will just radiate heat. So it can kind of store the heat. So your air conditioner doesn't have to work as hard. You know, you want to keep the doors closed, you don't, or the windows closed and the doors closed. You don't want people letting in the heat because anything that's letting in heat, like in my garage, for example, I have this vent and I just, I was, I was turning on fans and I was trying to cool it and I was like, I just can't get it. So what I ended up doing was I was like, all right, I just gotta, I gotta walk off the vents. I gotta find all the cracks that are letting in any bit of heat because that heat is so strong, 110, 111 degrees for, you know, 10 to 12 hours out of the day. It's, it's, or well, not, it's maybe like five to six hours a day reaches the peak heat. Right. But, um, those are just some things is like finding where finding closing off anything that's letting heat in when you have windows making sure they're tinted or they have um sunshades making sure you have insulation and if you get a two-story house your air conditioner is just going to work harder so it's like it's about preserving the the cool temperatures once you get it uh so that that that's my big tip on uh so the air air conditioner is the one that's going to get you as far as water water's not really going to get you i mean like i said uh, many of you guys already know i have a garden in my backyard I don't pay that much in, uh, in, in water, water, water doesn't get me. It's always the electric. The electric is the big, uh, thing that's your, that you're going to want to pay attention to. Okay. It looks like we got more people. Howard says, hi, Jeff, driving from San Diego to Prescott, Prescott Valley, Cottonwood, possibly in a permanent location, just visiting to check out any suggestions for places to see for housing or restaurants. Well, you, you know, you're going to go in there into the Verde Valley and there's going to be uh places around cottonwood i mean you're going to prescott valley and cottonwood so i mean there's no places in particular that are going to stand out i mean there's the bradshaw there's mingus there's uh bradshaw mountains i mean those are places that i like to go explore if you're into nature um the, there's some there's some uh, lakes around there. There's Cornville, and then you can go, obviously go to Sedona. I mean, Cottonwood's close enough to Sedona. There's just the whole Verde Valley. There's Montezuma's Castle. It depends on if you're into history, but as far as like restaurants, I don't really have any restaurant. I, I haven't done the whole food scene in um, Cottonwood or Prescott Valley. I mean, if you go down to Prescott Valley, if you go to Prescott, you can go to Whiskey Row. Whiskey Row is going to have a lot of variety of uh, restaurants. My mom lives in the Verde Valley. Uh, she would be a better person to ask than myself. Thanks to the 16 people who crushed up the likes. We have 56 people watching. Hi, Jeff. Know of a good IT employer around Peoria area. My husband and I are looking to move there this year. Well, if you're into IT, you need to go to the Southeast Phoenix. You're on the total. You're kind of on the wrong side of town if you're really looking to be close to the IT because Chandler and Southeast Phoenix is where the IT Mecca is in Phoenix. So if you're trying to get into tech, you need to go down to Mesa Chandler Gilbert. If you're over in Peoria, there is some stuff out there, but uh, you might check around Happy Valley. Happy Valley is going to be about, because you know, Phoenix is laid out on a grid. You have avenues on the west and you have streets on the east. So Peoria is down there out on like 100th Avenue, 90th Avenue, 83rd, 83rd Avenue. Um, you're way out there in happy Valley starts around about like 19th half yeah, all the way to like 19th street. So you're pretty far from the IT area, to be honest with you. I don't know why you're choosing Peoria though. For IT, any, any nightlife in the West Valley, East Valley is obviously better. Uh, in the 
so where the Arizona Cardinal Stadium is, they they have a nightlife area, and then that's it. <laughs> that's basically it. I mean, no, the West Valley is not the nightlife area. I mean, you can go to downtown, which is still far away. Um, <laughs> nightlife in the Peoria Arrowhead area gets some nightlife. Uh, <laughs> no, nightlife in West Phoenix, not that I know of. I mean, Arrowhead and and where the where the Cardinals play in Glendale. Uh, let's see, Angel Fire. Well, it's just so hot; it's all on the time. You know, is solar power a good idea? It's well, solar power you have to you have to pay the thirty thousand dollars to get the solar power installed. So you got to you know for five years you're making payments on that for like four or five hundred dollars because you know you're trying to say well if I make payments on this. Uh, my my power bill that's three to four hundred dollars a month. I mean that's on the high end, right? You're paying that three to four hundred to your power company, but how long is it going to take to pay that off, right? But then after you pay it off, it's like a car, right? It's like you you still owe payments on it, so you're still paying on it. But it's like once it's paid off, you don't owe anything except for insurance. That's the idea with solar power, and supposedly they give you a tax rebate with it, and you get like some sort of tax benefits. Uh, those can be useful for some people who uh, take advantage of the programs. But if you're really into solar, you need to talk to a professional. But every time I did, I was kind of like, I, I felt like if I wanted to stay in that home for five years, it's a good idea. It, it's something to really take serious if you're going to stay in your home for five years or longer. Hello, Jeff. You know of any good executive recruiters for a great job? Thanks. Um, well, so... If you're going to go, if you're looking for executive, uh, or what is that? Yeah. If you're looking for executive level jobs, those are going to be in, um, Scottsdale or Tempe, uh, central Phoenix, central Phoenix is probably more finance, I would say. Uh, and then obviously in Southeast Phoenix, there is some up in happy Valley, North Phoenix, uh, West Phoenix is, you know, it's really, I don't, I don't really know. I don't really have too much positive stuff to say about West Phoenix. It's not that it's just a, it's 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 not that it's a wasteland. It's just outside. Of, it's it's a retirement community. I mean, someone was asking where the retirement communities are. I mean, the first thing that comes to mind is Sun City, which is West Phoenix. Um, surprise and and whatnot is in terms of uh, commercial uh, or industry. It's not really out there. Okay, so Mr. Dandruck says public transportation in Phoenix area, good or bad? Uh, it doesn't really exist. I mean, we have a tram that most people choose not to use because it moves too damn slow. And the only people using it are people who are sleeping outside and homeless. Um, so if it moved faster, people would use it. That's that's the big thing. It just moves too damn slow. And Phoenix is so damn huge. I mean, it's spread out. It takes forever to get from Mesa to downtown Phoenix. Whereas, like, if, if it was like a, a maybe a, a train that went 55, 60 miles an hour, People would ride it, but a tram that just kind of scoots along going 35 miles an hour, <laughs> it's like they, they people would rather just jump on a um on one of those five lane highways, you know, 10 lane highways, you know, five and five, five going east, five going west, and go 75, 80 miles an hour. I'm not saying that you sh that's the speed limit. I'm saying that's how fast people go. I mean, you'll see people just you'll see people on motorcycles going 100 miles an hour while you're driving 75 and they're just whizzing right past you and they're already gone in a minute. Can't even see them. I mean, that's, that's what people do on the freeways. Phoenix is like, I've never seen, of all the places I've been, Phoenix has the most state-of-the-art, like, freeway system on earth. I mean, they, that's the whole thing. So they, they, they said, forget public transportation. We're going to go with automobiles here. And, and they just stick to it. They didn't, they didn't really get, they tried to, they're trying a tram, but that's about it. So public transport, buses, I mean, those take forever. You have buses and trams, and it's not too impressive. And most Uber drivers are cranky, and they don't really like it because they got to drop. Because typically they're picking up in Tempe and dropping off in Santan Valley, or picking up in Peoria and driving down to downtown Phoenix. So they're driving such long distances, and Uber drivers <coughs> they don't really want to drive that far. They 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 actually like the you know five to ten minute ride. So I guess that's it. What are your thoughts on Bisbee area? Oh, wow. Bisbee? What are you trying to do down in Bisbee? Visit or live? 
Bisbee is a good place to live, but not to work. I mean, I don't really see like any job opportunities out there. You'd have to be working online or maybe working in one of those entertainment things they have down there in Bisbee. What's up, producer third son? Angel Fire. Other than the light rail, they really there really isn't good transportation. Yeah, Phoenix is probably number one in like the country for um, freeway systems, but like last for public transportation. Um, JJ Vera says, hello, Jeff. Visited plenty of what's up with the crazy drivers. The crazy drivers, you know, people just on the road for a long time. They're always driving. So they got, they, they're really experienced with driving. They, they're experienced with driving fast, you know. Um, so when, they, when they're not driving fast, they get just kind of pent up. It's not quite stop and go like you would experience in Boston or New York or even L.A. But when they when they finally do slow down, they get cranky. So like if you're just at a stop sign or a stoplight and it turns green and you don't go like someone will honk their horn crazy and they'll pull up alongside you and they might even pull a gun. I mean, this is how crazy people get like that. Like there's people who are so irate behind the wheel. Like if you don't go at the stop sign or a stoplight, they'll pull up right alongside you and try and be like, what's up, man? We'll do, you know, they'll do all that stuff and you'll be like, whoa, just go, just go, go about your business. And then they'll, they'll, and they usually have those big old trucks, you know, so they got that big ego of, they got a big truck and it makes a lot of noise. So they'll just start taking off. It's just funny. No, Arizona isn't full of a-holes for the most, it's the only time you'll, you, there are occasional a-holes on the road. And, and, and it's funny because every once in a while you'll find the one, the, the, the one troll, the one troll out there. Uh, you know, trolling the population. <laughs> um, MRG says bird scooters. They do have bird scooters in Tempe. And it's pretty dangerous. Like being a pedestrian walking around anywhere in Phoenix is not safe. Pedestrian walking is not safe, not only because it's hot, but it's it's like they, Phoenix isn't built for walking. It's built for driving straight up. Oh, you work online? Yeah, you could live in Bisbee. You could buy some land and live out in Bisbee. You're going to be out there in the um, boondocks. <laughs> James Flanagan. Hey, Jeff, moving to Chino Valley after hearing about it from you. Thanks. Okay, so you went out to Chino Valley north of Prescott and you checked it out. What did you like about Chino Valley? The cheap land or just the, 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 just what did you like about Chino Valley? I'm curious. Steve Cruz found your videos this morning. I've been looking to buy somewhere between Tucson and Phoenix. Uh, so if you're looking to buy between Tucson and Phoenix, have you checked out um, Oro Valley or the area just north of Oro Valley? Uh, uh, you could consider Maricopa or Casa Grande. I, but most people who live in Casa Grande or ever did live there that moved there, unless you're a Casa Grande local, you probably won't like Casa Grande. I would take Maricopa over Casa Grande, but it depends on who you ask. Does AZ have a lot of dead Wi-Fi spots? So at, because I'm traveling around, being that I'm in New Zealand right now and I'm in Australia, one of the things that stood out to me is Australia has really crummy internet. Like, you know, I was like leaving the Philippines, which has terrible internet. <laughs> and I was like, oh, cool. I'll go to, I'll go to um, Australia and I'll get some really fast internet. And then I was like, this is kind of slow. So I guess, no. Phoenix does not have slow internet. In fact, we have really fast internet in uh, Phoenix, really fast. Uh, as far as cell phone connectivity, I would say that there is a problem with uh, your data. Your cell phone will have issues. You won't have as strong a connect. Actually, the whole thing, the whole cell phone network is overburdened. They don't have enough towers. One of the reasons why the cell phone networks get overburdened after I called Verizon, I said, what's going on here? I'll be in, I'll be in downtown. I'll be in right in the heart of Phoenix or right in the heart of Gilbert and my Google maps won't even pull up the destination. You know, like when you type in, okay, uh, car wash, the thing just spins and spins and spins. And you're like, I'm in the central Phoenix. All I need to know is how to get to that specific destination. And it's like, well, my data is too slow. And from what the guy was telling me, he said that, uh, Oh, by the way, thanks to the 31 people who crushed up the likes hit the like button. Thank you. 88 people are watching. So he told me that because there's so many people moving there, they can't build the towers fast enough. So what happens is the towers get overburdened and then it bottlenecks everyone. So, and, and it's not just because it's not just because there's so many people and not enough towers. 
It's also because people are uploading and streaming on their phones more than ever before. So people are uploading things to their Facebook. They're doing these live things. And these things, put a, this, it, it's more bandwidth uh, for, for the network. So that's why that's that's what's going on. But the reason that Wi-Fi works or is because they use, in Phoenix, they use uh, fiber optics. So if you need really strong internet, ask your provider, Comcast or whoever you go with, CenturyLink, say, do you guys have broadband? Or not broadband, um, fiber optics. And fiber optics is lightning quick. Noel says, I don't even know if I can find a good job in AZ. Yeah, jobs, jobs in AZ is really a, a concern because there's jobs. Obviously, like if you want to work at Circle K, McDonald's, or, or Jack in the Box, but it's kind of like, or well, well, the other industries that do really good in Arizona are construction. Like I know construction guys who make lots of money, big money. We're talking huge money. Um, but when it comes to like, you know, there, there's they're building some IT stuff and they have IT stuff, but that's not going to provide that. That's only maybe a couple hundred thousand jobs. And there's what, 4 million people, 5 million people in the Phoenix Metro area, depending on what you consider Phoenix Metro. Producer third son says, how normal is it for an average person to have seen UFOs in Arizona? Uh, UFOs in Arizona, it's rare. Most most people have not seen UFOs. Well, okay, by definition, a UFO is a, what the heck is that? It's an unidentified flying object. <coughs> so, yes, you will see things in Arizona that you might be like at night and look up and be like, what is that? I don't know. It's an unidentified flying object. Now, if you're saying aliens, I don't know anyone who claims to have seen aliens in Arizona. I mean, you know about Phoenix Lights, and those are like unidentified flying objects, but that doesn't necessarily mean it's extraterrestrial. So, um, it, it, I mean, a lot of the a lot of the stuff that SpaceX does in Los Angeles, they'll shoot like some rocket into the sky and it'll create like this green tracer, and everyone will be like, "What is that? <laughs> what the heck is that?" And then they'll find out, "Oh, SpaceX was just launching a rocket into orbit." We don't get that in Phoenix, though, but. We did have a, an Area 51 type in, uh, area where the military would do things over at Barry Goldwater. So you would see things that were kind of suspicious and that was usually traced back to Barry Goldwater uh, bombing missile range or is it a gunnery range or whatever. But in, in Tucson, they have Davis Monthan and around Davis Monthan, there's an industry of like Raytheon. If you work in aerospace, it's pretty good in Tucson because I think, uh, Northrop Grumman, Raytheon, and uh, maybe Lockheed. I think those, I, don't quote me on that, but I'm pretty sure that, uh, that so aerospace is pretty good and that and, and that's really, had, it's because of Davis Monthan in Tucson. So what I'm saying is when they're testing things out that are classified or secret, you might not know about what it is they're testing out because of the classification of it. So sometimes you'll see things flying around and you'll be like, what is that? And it's because Davis Monthan in the aerospace industry might be trying something out. But usually you don't see stuff. Usually you won't. But it happens. So if you're in, if you're like hoping to move there and see some of that every once in a while because you like excitement, no, this it's not going to be like that. Any updates on the Interstate 11 highway from Phoenix to Vegas? As far as I know, they, I mean, they built the 202. I'm still waiting to hear more about the, the Highway 11. I mean, that, I, I need to look into it. I haven't heard anything new, and I've been following Governor Doug Ducey on his Facebook page, and he hasn't said anything, but hopefully he does. Linda G says, sometimes a rocket sent up from Vandenberg will show up in the sky here. Yeah, okay, so Vandenberg's in uh, central California in the desert, just north of Los Angeles, outside of Bakersfield. But, you know, that means that... that rocket would have to be tracing towards the they don't usually trace it they don't usually send it over the continental united states they send it out to sea from vandenberg so you won't be seeing it likely but if you do it would be because they sent it towards the uh middle america linda g says we need to get the 11 yeah we need to get the 11 i mean right now driving from phoenix to vegas it takes 
you know, four to five hours. I don't know. You, you know, you've got to drive through Kingman. Everyone, everyone's always like, Hey Jeff, why don't you like Kingman? I don't know. Go, go drive to Vegas and start and see what's up with Kingman when you get there. It's cool. I guess. I mean, go there in the winter or the summer and you'll be like, it's too hot in the summer and too cold in the winter. Alisa Jimenez says, how long have I lived in Arizona? So I grew up in Arizona up until I was 20. So from zero to 20, I lived there. And then I went into the Navy. I went in the military and then I moved back in 2018. So 20 plus years, but I was born in Arizona. So, I mean, being born in Arizona, you, 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 uh, you know, you just have a different awareness of it. How's vehicle registration fees and are they annual? Okay. So this is something. So insurance and registration are going to be a little bit more expensive in Arizona because of all the roads, you know, they got to pay for it somehow. So um, registration tends to be higher, but some of the things you can do, uh, lightweight vehicles, uh, uh, certain years, certain, certain cars are going to pay less than, than other vehicles. And a lot of that's going to depend on, I think, I think, I think they have a smart system where it's like how much of a gas consumer is your car? How environmentally friendly is it? Uh, how heavy is it? Stuff like that is what they, they factor in. If you want to go to the DMV website, you can look into the details that will give you a cheaper registration. But then again, I mean, when it comes to registration, we're talking, you know, a few hundred dollars, like $300 on the high end. That's still a lot once a year, three, three to four. I've actually, I've heard it up to as high as $700. <laughs> I think that was for like a newer Escalade, like a $60,000 Escalade had a $700 registration. But insurance is high in Arizona because people drive so dang much. So the probability of you getting into a fender bender or something over time, you know, so that's what causes the insurance to be a little bit higher in Arizona. Um, and that's based off of zip codes. Uh, so it's just kind of the way it is. No, I don't think we have $400 a month insurance. No. Once mixed my medical, okay, <laughs> Ted Nugent, um, will they come to the 303 in the East Valley or some kind of freeway in Queen Creek? Oh, will they continue the 303? I haven't heard anything about continuing the 303. Um, they were supposed to. I mean, there was a master plan for the 303. Uh, in case you guys don't know, there's the 101, the 202, and the 303. The the 101, it's the loop. They're loops. So loop 101, loop 202, but they're incomplete. And I think like what, 15 to 20 percent of the 303's loop is completed. Like they just completed a big portion of the 202, but the the northern portion, you know, the, I don't think the 202 is a loop yet because the 202, you know, you could take the 202 to Mesa and then it swings around finally the South Mountain, but I guess you could. Are they calling the I-10 that connects to the 202, are they calling that part of the 202? I don't know where the future plan is for the northern part of the uh, 202. I'd have to look, or someone can look it up. Let me see. Loop 202 in Phoenix. So Loop 101 is done. It's a full loop. But they just completed, they just completed the south mountain part of the Loop 202, which alleviates a lot of traffic. So I don't know if they're considering it done because it, it connects into the I into the I-10. This is what we need to find out is, is, is it considered done? They call it the Santan Freeway in the East Valley. But the 303, I mean, they should continue that, but it's going to depend on growth and all that. And, you know, once the, once people, once the roads get too congested, the people complain and this and that. Rich Schultz says, what's valley fever? Valley fever is like a respiratory illness that comes about from spores that get in the dust. So when, when there's like a dust storm during a monsoon or something like that, the, the spores, there's supposed to be spores and they get into your respiratory system, into your lungs. I've never known, I personally have never known anyone who got uh, valley fever. It always seems like the, the people who are new to Phoenix or Arizona end up having some sort of story about how their dog got valley fever or how they got valley fever. Uh, the, the only time that you might be at high risk of valley fever is if uh, like there's a big dust storm in the summer. So it's been dry from March, 
or from say May, April, May, June, July, and then all of a sudden the monsoons come. So monsoons will bring with it haboobs and big sandstorms. You, you guys have seen those big walls of sand that come sweeping over the valley. That I mean, that could be a thing, but that's what that's basically what it is. It's a respiratory thing. Paul Piper, do you know if Surprise is still going to get that Prasada shopping mall? Good question. Let's look. Prasada ch shopping mall in Surprise. A lot of these plans, in, in case you guys didn't know, like they fall through. Like that thing in Casa Grande that was supposed to Dreamport Village. That was all. Everyone was getting all excited. They're like, they're going to build a Disneyland type resort in uh, Casa Grande and all this. And then it falls through. And then, like they built the, uh, what they built on the Indian or uh, the Native American uh, talking stick uh, out there by Talking Stick Casino, they built the uh, butterfly gardens and and the and the Od Odyssey uh, Aquarium, and everyone gets all excited because they think that there's like this Sea World thing, and then when they go there, they're like, oh man, marine mammals aren't supposed to be in the desert, you know? So some of these, uh, from what it says here, Prasada, I've never been there. It's on the 303 Greenway. It looks like it's it looks like it's still pending as of 2016. It says I don't know. <coughs> Which area do you prefer, Prescott or Prescott Valley? Well, I mean, do you like trees or you don't like trees? Because Prescott Valley doesn't have trees. Prescott does. Uh, Prescott's more old. Prescott Valley's more new. Prescott, Prescott Valley is closer to Sedona, closer to Cottonwood, closer to the Verde Valley. Prescott's closer to like the edge of nowhere. Is the town of Globe growing? No, Globe is not growing. Globe is Globe is is like a ghost town that just kind of didn't die. It's like Jerome, like people were saying, oh, I want to go to Jerome. I'm going to go spend the weekend in Jerome. I'm like, you realize when you go to Jerome, there's not much to see there. But because like Jerome is like world, world renowned for wine, I mean, what are you going to do? Spend the whole day at the winery and then go to walk around the ghost town of Jerome? Yeah, it's cool, but it's not a whole day thing. I mean, I guess they could maybe build it up into a, like if they keep intelligently thinking about how to market this place, more people will come and then they'll have to be forced to create more. Uh, entertainment like here in Queenstown New Zealand for example they've just they've got beautiful scenery yeah but they built bungee jumps they built like skydiving they built wineries they built all these things and and so when people come here they're not bored so they keep coming back because they got all this stuff going on they could do all that they could turn the Verde Valley into something or the Verde River into something that has water sports they could create like a bungee jump or something and, and, make, and then make it like world renowned but until they start doing things like that, it's kind of boring out there in just the Verde Valley and Prescott Valley. It is really boring. I mean, sure, they got wineries, but, I mean, how long are you going to spend at a winery? Like, okay, you walk around, you look at the wine. You've been to one winery, you've been to them all. I mean, I guess it's fun to sit there and eat some food for an hour, hour and a half, two hours, and drink some wine and do some wine tasting. But after that, you're kind of like, where do we go now? We go back to our hotel. Well, most people, they prefer to go to Sedona anyway. What's the longest outdoor gun range you have there? 200, I don't know about guns. I don't do the gun thing. Jerome is a ghost town, yeah. I, I, I used to go, when I was in the military, I used to go to gun ranges, but I don't go anymore, so. Nursey Lulu, what do you like most about living in Arizona? We're from California thinking of moving up there. I mean, what do you like most about Arizona? Probably the cost of living, you get big house. You get a big house, big piece of property for a really good price, especially if you're coming from California. It's like one third the price. Everything else is going to be, uh, you know, between. But it's kind of like the the thing, the other things that you pay, the cost of living and food and all that, a little bit more affordable than California, but more expensive than other places. What's up, Anthony? Um, first time watching. Nice. If some of you guys haven't already tuned into my other channel island hopper tv i'll put i'll give you guys a link to that but um like i said i'm in uh new zealand right now i just did uh southeast asia i did philippines for 20 days i did um vietnam singapore cambodia thailand australia and new zealand 
So if you guys want to see Jeff doing some, uh, what is it? Expanding my worldly consciousness and sharing the information that I pick up over there with you guys, that's Island Hopper TV. You guys can join or follow that channel. I'll put a link right here in the comments. That's where I'm coming to. I'm, I'm, this is not my house. I'll show you this room. Got my laundry bag there because I'm doing laundry while I do this live feed. It's a pretty big room. It's a pretty big room for a hundred bucks. Pretty happy. The last room I had was like 120 bucks. They were trying to sit, sell the room for $224 tonight. And it's so small, it's like a box. I was like, damn, because New Zealand's expensive. I have two masks in my uh, backpack, but I haven't had to use them. But yeah, I was when I was in Singapore, I was Singapore, everyone had a mask. Like, what was this, J January 23rd? Like, yeah, January 23rd, everyone was wearing a mask except for me. <laughs> so I got what I've been doing is I've been getting this um this hand sanitizer. I just buy tons of hand sanitizer. Like when I get on a plane, I I take it, I, I put it in my hand and I like wipe down the side rails. I've been on like maybe 15 to 20 flights too. Um, but if I if I'm sitting next to someone coughing up a lung, bam, I'm pulling out my mask. I got two two of those masks in my bag. I haven't used them. I'm saving it for like the the big flight home because from New Auckland or from New Zealand or Sydney, wherever I could fly home out of, it's a 12 hour flight. Well, I was thinking about Island hopping back, going to like Fiji, Tahiti, Vanuatu and those tropical islands in the Pacific uh, and kind of like then hitting Hawaii. So it's not like a big 12 hour flight. It's kind of like a three hour flight, a four hour flight, a six hour flight, and then a another five hour flight home. Oh yeah, I know about those planes. They have germs. I mean, that's what I'm saying. I uh, I bring hand sanitizer with me. Angel Fire says, "So dark cars are not good in AZ with all the sand." Uh, I mean, what's a dark car? Black. You, you you're talking about getting like swirl marks, like so when you get a car wash, the, they'll they'll be washing your car, but if there's like sand on there, like when when the sun shines down on it, you'll see it. On a black car, you'll see the swirl marks from when they were you know hand hand washing your car and so the only way to get rid of it is buff it out but um i don't think it's that big of a deal uh i have a i have a like a gray car like a carbon gray and that's that's a dark car right like kind of like this like a carbon gray it's more grayer than this um i don't have any problems with that oh okay so also a black car in the summertime is going to be hot that's what you're talking about right yeah, black cars get hotter. Um, definitely, for sure. You want you probably want um you probably want a yeah, probably a white car or like a like a silver car. If you get a black car, you're going to be hot in the summer for sure. How bad are the monsoons in Phoenix? Um not as bad as they used to be, but every once in a while we'll get like we'll, two to three times a year we get a real kicker. But what city, what place on earth doesn't get a real kicker storm? I mean, <laughs> I mean every, every Chicago it gets them in the winter. They get blizzards. I mean, Miami gets hurricanes. Los Angeles, I guess, doesn't really get anything too crazy. But I mean, down here in Queenstown, New Zealand, I can't even go to Milford Sound, which is like they call it the eighth wonder of the world. It's this beautiful, like, Fajord. I don't know if you guys know what a Fajord is, but it's called Milford Sound. I can't go over there because the, it rained. They had torrential rains, and it took out the road. And I'm like, I came all the way down here, and you're telling me that the eighth wonder of the world is closed right now? Damn. Monsoons in Tucson are beautiful. Oh, my gosh, yeah. I mean, monsoons in Tucson are, are amazing, and it's the smell of the rain in the desert, like, the way the rain makes the smell of all the plants come out and then just the way it, like the storm just rolls in over the mountains with the lightning and the thunder and sometimes it's loud <laughs> but then like afterwards you get this like beautiful rainbow it's just it's really tucson gets really beautiful uh monsoons there's no doubt about that who said that tara moody tara you're right gorilla monsoon was the best Mr. Precision says, have you seen a tarantula while hiking? Yeah. 
I, I've seen, let's see, the only thing I've never seen hiking, thanks to the 66 people who crushed up the likes, by the way, and hit the like button. Appreciate that. Um, the only thing I haven't seen hiking is a mountain lion. I've seen a bobcat. I've seen coyotes, plenty of coyotes. I've seen, I actually have never seen a Gila monster in the wild either. I've seen plenty of chuckawallas. I've seen bears. I have not seen a ringtail cat, which is a, what they call them a Cotamunde, Cotamundes. So, but I've seen everything else. I mean, I've seen tortoises. I've seen frogs. <laughs> There's a, there's a frog in Arizona you're not supposed to touch, by the way. Don't touch frogs in Arizona. There's like this uh, spotted frog. You shouldn't touch it. And snakes, yeah. Oh, yeah, you see snakes in Arizona. Heck, yeah. Heck, yeah, you see snakes, man. But they're not all dangerous. It's the one that's a rattler. If you hear it rattling or you see a rattler, you got to check its tail. If it's black and white, like a like a raccoon, that's usually a sign of, the, um, of a rattlesnake. And they, them suckers, they coil up. When they're coiled up, you do not get close because it's ready to strike on you. But if it's laid out like long, just walk away. They're kind of fast too. Uh, tarantulas, no. From what I, I mean, I've seen plenty of people have a tarantula walk all over them. Have I seen a chubacabra? <laughs> <coughs> no. They had, they had like this mangy looking coyote kind of thing. And surprised one time, and it was on the news. And that that thing, I was like, "That's not a coyote. That's a chupacabra." No. What are your thoughts on Buckeye? And do you think it's too far from a job in Tempe? Yes, I do. <laughs> I mean, if you're trying to move to Tempe, or if you're trying to work in Tempe, check out Awatuki. What's wrong with Awatuki? Why you guys? I've to, I've told everyone on this channel, if you're trying to be in the if you're trying to get set up real nice, go to Awatuki. You guys are trying to go to Buckeye and s save a lot of money. I guess that's good, but there's no jobs out there. Buckeye is nice, but where are you going to work? The desert centipedes bite. Yeah, centipedes. I've seen centipedes that are like big old Tootsie Roll, like thick, like yellow, and like blue body and yellow legs and like red tentacles. And I was like, dude. That's a scary look, like this long. And I've seen them in Arizona. They're usually up in the desert. You won't get them in your house. And Light and Truth Seeker says, I love Awatuki. Yes. If you're trying to move to Tempe, you need to be checking at, or if you're trying to work in Tempe, go to Awatuki. Charlie says, I bought her dinner. Oh, gosh. Okay. Linda G, Buckeye is okay if you work at the Air Force Base. Yes. Air Force Base creates jobs, but there's no real industry out in West Phoenix. I still, they, I don't know why they keep building out that way. I don't even know why people keep taking the bait and moving out there. <laughs> Noel got bit by a centipede on the back and it hurt like an MO. Um, the, do, centipede, do centipedes beat, bite? I think they, I think they're, their legs have like poison in them. So when they walk on you, but I haven't seen centipedes. I haven't seen a centipede in a long time. They're usually in the desert. I haven't seen a snake at my house either. Um, I've heard coyotes, but I haven't seen them. Like I haven't, we, we haven't had a problem with a pack, like getting too comfortable. Albuquerque had a pack of uh, coyotes that got too comfortable and they don't, they actually, I think they're going to have to take those coyotes and either catch them and replace them or, I think they were even talking about euthanizing those coyotes because they got too comfortable with humans and they're just coming into people's backyards, taking their dogs, taking their cats. Are having humidifiers crucial in Arizona? Yeah, I mean, if you if you want if you have asthma and all these other problems, you know, you might consider getting a humidifier. Like low humidity does happen, except for in the monsoon season, we have decent humidity, but it's pretty dry in Arizona. It's really dry. Do you know of any good tech companies or startups in Phoenix? So there's this place, there's this, I think it's called Carvana. So check out Carvana. It's like a startup, but it's headquartered in Tempe. There's um, GoDaddy's in Tempe or in Chandler. Uh, 
what is it intel intel has a major office and then they say the apple has like a pretty big uh, data center but only like a select not a lot of people i think it's only like 100 jobs but then they're talking about building a google data center and an amazon fulfillment center and all of that is being proposed for uh eastmark in mesa so that's a great place if some like if you're looking to move if you're looking to work in tempe go look at eastmark eastmark is it eastmark is better than buckeye you're going to pay a little bit more but you're going to be in an area that's going to gain value i don't know if buckeye is necessary like in a collapse of the economy but place like buckeye i think like if the economy went south i think a place like buckeye would really suffer because where are people going to, how are people going to pay for those houses that their jobs are so far away and there's no jobs out there or there's no, there's jobs obviously, but there's not like a, an abundance of jobs. So when a market crash happens, a place like Buckeye is going to lose say 20, 30, 40% in value. Whereas a place like Eastmark being right there next to all the infrastructure and the jobs and not too far away is going to be able to sustain that. They might lose up to 10 to 15, 20% in value. So I would recommend, if you haven't already, take a look at Eastmark. See you later, Noel. Is there gold in them there hills? Possible. This, this river out here in um, Queenstown is called uh, Overshot or Shot Over River. And it was called the uh, world's most... Uh, best river to, to find gold so it's the best it's the it's the wealthiest river and uh they found a lot of gold over there so there's gold over here in these here these hills anyways guys i'm out um i'm gonna go get my laundry out if you haven't already followed me on island hopper tv the one that i'm making all those videos of australia new zealand and philippines i just put a link right there please do follow me over there and if you watch any of the videos leave a comment and let me know i, I recognize most of these uh names alicia tara um producer charlie linda keith so i'll see if some of you guys come on over and uh see y'all thanks for thanks for tuning in hopefully uh we answer some of your questions in the beginning of the video or throughout the video and we'll see you next time oh join our group on facebook too living in arizona you can ask your questions there because i know i haven't been making a lot of videos